Hi, controlling another person. And this is a really complex topic that is very sensitive for a lot of folks. And what I want to do is I want to look at it through the lens of an individual with BPD. Now, you know, in my workbook, I talk about that BPD lens and how that distorts perceptions. But when we talk about this need or a strong desire to control someone else, that it adds another level of fear, desperation, and concern. And what happens is, is that I believe that this sense of need to control someone else comes out of abandonment fears, rejection sensitivity, and a sense of emptiness. And I think that individuals who are along that BPD spectrum, that I think that they're trying to manage this. And here they have their favorite person, or perhaps it's this person that they're working with, or even an ex, boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, whatever it may be. And they notice in the relationship that it was very tumultuous. There was a lot of upheaval. And there were a lot of issues and things like that. And then sometimes when you're out of it or when you're in it, that you try to maintain or develop an environment in which you can function, feel good, and feel safe. Now, this is why I talk a lot about core content and surface content. Because what happens is that surface content is all of that acting out, that need for control, that desire to control someone else. I do not believe that we can ever genuinely control another person. Uh, I think that there's a degree of, of expectation in that. I think that if, if you ask a lot of people, oh, do you think you could control him or her? 99% of the time, people are gonna say no. If you could talk to the emotional aspect of that person, and you could say, do you want to or desire to control that person? I think that the answer would be yes. And I think that, again, it comes out of that core content. What are the drivers of abandonment fear? What are the drivers of rejection sensitivity, emptiness? What are driving those issues, those concerns? And what happens is it becomes maladaptive patterns. That's where the BPD, that's where the personality part comes out, because you end up engaging in these behaviors that are destructive to self, destructive to others, and destructive in the relationship in which you both come together. So it's important, and this is scary, to realize that you can't control someone else. And remember, cognitively, you probably get it. You're like, yeah, I know. Thanks for the tip, right? But emotionally, when you look at your core content, what is your core content? A lot of times, as I mentioned, it's those three things. But you could have others. Fear, doubt, insecurity, inferiority, whatever it may be. And it's those things. Could you allow your partner, significant other, a sense of freedom where you're like, well, if they leave, then it just wasn't meant to continue. What does that mean for you? And that may bring up a lot of fear. And that is going to be that family in the head that I talk about in a lot of videos, is that it's that family in the head saying, well, if such and such left, maybe they're a horrible partner. Maybe they were terrible. Maybe they weren't very nice to you. Maybe they were neglectful. Maybe whatever it was. Maybe the maybes, you know what the maybes are. And here you are, right? You're you're trying to manage this situation. You're trying to manage this relationship. And here that family in the head takes advantage of you by saying, well, I mean, if they're going to leave, you're not going to get anybody better. So you better hang on, better hang on to him or her, or them, whatever it is, because this is all you're going to get. This is the best it's ever going to get. That's your family in the head talking. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's easy to be alone, that it's easy to be without a partner, significant other, without friends, without other people. Because we're also talking about friends too, right? We're also talking about the people that populate your interpersonal circle. But if those people are maladaptive others, they're not healthy for you. They don't help you grow. They don't encourage your exploration of that healthy side of you. You kind of have to start making the choice to move on. And the way that you do that is first, as you realize and look at the people that are in your life, and this can be really scary, and I understand that. That's why a mental health provider can be really helpful to, to walk you through it, to get a sense of safety and security. I know for a lot of my clients, 
I provide that sense of safety and security so that they can go out on a couple branches, so to speak, and see, is this somebody I really want in my life? They're, they're better able to make decisions because they have a sense of safety and they're able to remove that BPD lens, feel safe, and then make an authentic interpretation of the people in their life. And that's what it's about. Easy to say, hard to do. I know it. But the best place to start is understanding that core content. What are those drivers? And also cognitively, emotionally, understanding that you can't control someone else. And the best relationships are not based on the relationships you need. They're based on the relationships you want. I hope this was helpful for you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.